Hey guys, it's Kaylor. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, I have another design to code video for you. This is going to be part one where we design a portfolio website. This portfolio website is going to have a landing section that's going to tell about you. It's going to show a picture of you. Then we're going to have a skill section below that. Just a simple little thing showing some of the programs you learn. It's up to you what you include here. And then down in the bottom, we're going to highlight a few of your larger projects. You can duplicate this section as many times as you see fit to include four to five huge projects. Then after that, I'm including a link to Dribble for smaller projects. So let's get started creating this portfolio website. To start off, make sure you download the project files in the description. It's going to have everything in the assets panel and it's going to look like this when you first load it up as well as all the images will be included in that folder. If you download that project file, if you double click on the artboard and select layout, this should already be done for you. But just in case, I have it set to two columns and the column width is at 300. And this bottom value down here for margins linked is at zero. So that's going to give us the spacing that we're going to use throughout the design on each side. Now let's start off by adding our name. And this is going to be the main heading of this first section. And I'm just going to put this for Ethan Jones. I'm going to select the circular size 70 font. For the fonts, I'm using Circular. If you don't have this font, you can use whatever you want. But if you want it to look exactly, you can download this by just Googling Circular STD, and that will pop up with this font in like the first or second link. So I'm gonna position this on our margin, and from the top, I'm gonna do 258 pixels from the top of the browser. Next, I'm gonna grab my type tool, and I'm just gonna drag out a text area and paste in, hello, my name is blank. I am a UI UX designer and product designer. You can put here whatever your titles are. Command A or Control A to select all of that. And I'm gonna align that to the left and set this to the gray color that I'm using right here with this swatch. I'm also wanting to highlight that I'm now a product designer. So I'm going to click the blue color and make that just stand out a little bit better. Then I'm gonna adjust this box so it's not too large. Set the width on this to 660 pixels. And then I'm going to align this to our margin and 10 pixels below Ethan Jones. So I'm holding shift and down on the D-pad we will go in increments of 10. Below that, I'm going to want to list out some of the things I do besides these two things because most people in design do more than just that. So I'm just going to duplicate this holding alt, double click, and let's just put in UI UX, product designer once again, web design, and then we'll do front end. I'm just gonna leave the developer part off front end because most people know what it is and it looks a little better than having a word that long on this list. Since this is a list, I'm gonna be adjusting the line height on this. So I'm gonna select this and change this value from 45 to 60. Also, I think I forgot to mention on this, the line height is set to 45. I'm gonna line this to the bottom of our text area and go down about 40 pixels. So we have something like that. Over here on the right, we're gonna have two circles. One is gonna have our face in it, and the other one's just gonna be a highlight color of a blue circle behind it. So I'll grab my ellipse tool and hold shift and drag out a circle. I'm gonna remove the border on this and set this to blue for now. I'm gonna hit the lock button and just change the first value to 380, and that should automatically change the Y value to 380 as well. I'm gonna position this 205 pixels from the top of the artboard. and touching my margin here on the right. I'm then going to duplicate this, holding Alt and dragging. And I'm gonna make this one black just for a second. Command, Shift, and left square bracket key to send it to the back. And I'm just gonna kind of visually align this somewhere around here. And then I'm gonna change it back to blue. On this circle, I'm gonna drag in a picture of Ethan's face. If I turn my layout off real quick, You'll see what we have right now. To add a little bit of separation between these two circles, I'm gonna select the image and I'm gonna apply a white border. I'm gonna select to add the border to the outside of this image with this icon right here and set this to 10. Up top, all we have to do is add some basic navigation things. So we're gonna want a contact me button and a few social media icons. I've already provided for you the chat icon that I use in this design. So I'm just gonna drag that out from the symbols panel. Next to it with my type tool, I'm just going to put out contact me. And I'm going to select this blue circular book 20 point font. I'm going to center it up to this icon and then go out 20. 
hold shift and select it and then group them together with command G. I'm going to turn on my layout real quick and I'm going to align this to the left margin and 50 pixels from the top of the page. On the right side I'm going to include links to Dribble, Behance, and YouTube. I'm going to line Dribble up to the right side margin then Behance is going to be 40 pixels to the left beside that. And then the same with YouTube. I'm going to select all three. I'm going to go up here and make sure they are distributed horizontally correctly and then make sure they're in line and then group them together. And I'm going to select contact me, center them up and group it. I'm also going to go in and set the colors on these from black to gray so they don't stand out too much. And I'm going to use this gray right here. I'm just double clicking in the group to make it editable. And I'm going to do that for all three. I'm quickly going to add an icon down here that symbolizes scrolling down. So I'm just going to do this with two circles, nothing too fancy. Just holding shift to drag out a perfect circle. On the border of this, I'm going to set this to 5. I'm going to apply this gray color right here as a border. I'm going to make sure this is 18 pixels by 18 pixels. And then I'm going to hold Alt and duplicate that. Then I'm going to set it to a 10 by 10. I'll just put about 12 spacing in between those two. Make sure they're centered and group them together. Selecting that group and clicking the center align button right here will make sure it is aligned perfectly center on our artboard. I'm going to drag these down and go up around 70 pixels. Now I'm going to select the artboard and just drag this down so we have more room to work with. Just about there will work for now. On the next section I'm going to drag out a rectangle and this rectangle is going to be the full width of the artboard and it's going to be 650 pixels tall. I'm going to line that to the bottom here. That should be 1080 pixels from the top of the artboard. And I'm just going to quickly lock this so we can't move it. I'm just going to type out skills. And this one's going to be the circular medium 50 point font. And I'll center that up to the artboard. I'm going to grab this bit of text up here and hold alt and duplicate that. Command shift right square bracket key to bring that to the front. I'm going to select this gray to make it all gray. Then I'm going to paste in over seven years of design experience using these programs. Command A to select all of that and then I'm going to center that up. I'm going to place this 10 below the skills text. And then we need our program icons so I'm going to drag out each of them one by one. I'm going to center all of these up. I'm going to set the spacing on these to 80 pixels. Then I'm just going to double check everything, realign them, make sure they're evenly spaced, and then group them together. 40 spacing in between the bottom of our text and our icons. I'm going to hold shift and select all of those, group them together. I'm going to unlock the background, select the grouping we just made and the background holding shift and then align them perfectly center. I'm going to select the rectangle and remove the border so we can no longer see it. And then I'm going to create a rectangle that's the entire size of the original artboard we created. So 1920 by 1080. I'm going to drag that down to the bottom of this rectangle for the skill section, touch it to the bottom, and then I'm going to adjust my artboard to make sure this fits. So here's the new one. I'll leave the border on just for now. I'll quickly just lock this one so we can't move it. This is going to be for our project that we're going to be displaying as one of our works. And then below that, we're going to have another one. And then you can duplicate these sections as many times as you want. For the first title of our project, I'm just going to put Apple Store. This was the name of the first project this person created. And I'm going to put this as the circular medium 70 point font. I'm going to line this to the left side margin and 370 pixels from the top of this section. Below that, I'm going to type in view project. This is going to be our circular bold 30 point font. I'm going to line this to the left margin and then go down 10 from this title. Below that I'm going to put a blue underline and I already have that for you in the symbols panel so just drag that out. 
it's just a line with a border of three pixels set to blue with a 61 pixels if you want to create it yourself. And I'll set that to 10 pixels below the view project. Now I'm going to create a rectangle for our work to be displayed in. This is going to be 1074 pixels wide by 604 pixels tall. Command left square bracket to send it behind our text. And then I'm going to align this to the center of our square. So I'm going to unlock this, grab both of them, and then line it up. And I'm going to relock this background square. I'm going to drag in this project's image. I'm going to apply a white border of 10 to this. And then I'm going to make sure that it's still on the inside. I'm going to apply a drop shadow to this with a 70 blur. I'm going to paste in a color. I'm going to actually add this color to the swatches here so you can use it. I'm going to set it to 6% opacity. For this project, I'm going to have some social media icons here on the left. This is going to take you to that post on that platform. I'm going to start by dragging in this new black icon of YouTube I just made. This will also be in the symbols panel. I'm going to align that to the side of this and go out 30. Then I'm going to align it to the bottom and go up 30 from there. Above that, I'm going to place Behance directly above it. And this is going to be 50 pixels of spacing in between those two icons. And then finally dribble above that 50 pixels. I'm going to select all of them, center them up, group them, and check the spacing once more. That looks good. So that is our first project section. So I'm going to expand my artboard down. We can unlock this rectangle now. And I'm going to select all of these, Control c Control v and drag this below and make sure it touches the bottom of this section. For this second project, I'm going to put the text on the right side and the image on the left. So I'm going to quickly group all of these. Make sure you include the line, Command G. And I'm going to drag them over until they touch this margin. I'm going to grab these icons and just quickly move them out of the way. And then drag the image to the left margin. And then you can realign these icons 30 pixels to the right. Just like that. I'm going to ungroup this text and realign it to the right. I'm going to change this text to a right align and then change it to social app. And then I'll drag in a new image really quick. One thing to note, I will not be including these two images in the project files. For one, this is not my image. I just found this on Google and this is a project I did a while back. So you guys can just fill these in with your own projects. Now I'm going to drag out my artboard just a little bit more. Grab the rectangle tool and create a rectangle just below this section. I'm going to adjust the height on this to 525 high. And then I'm going to try my best to match the artboard to the bottom of this. In this section, I'm just going to grab my type tool and type out more on dribble. This is going to be circular, 30 point font, blue book font. I'll center that up to this section. Drag out another underline and make sure that is 10 below this text. Group those together, and then I'm going to realign them to this section. I'm going to drag out this icon, and then hit Command-Shift-G to ungroup it, which will remove it from the symbol, so we can edit this one freely without adjusting all the other dribble icons. I'm going to scale this one way up, so for now, I'm just going to put this at 100. And then I'll just drag this out. Around there. I'm going to set the color on this to the blue we've been using. Let's drop the opacity down to 5%. And this is a little too big. I'm going to set this to around 450. And then we'll just put it back down here in the corner. Now you can either delete this section or just remove the border. I'm going to remove my layout so we can see it. And for a little bit of detail, I'm going to put some circles in the background. I'm going to duplicate the circles we made earlier. Just copy those. And I'll paste them down here on this footer. Ungroup them. And I'm just going to delete one of them. I'm going to make this 42 pixels by 42 pixels. And I'll just drag that around there. And I'm going to duplicate this one and put it over here somewhere. And then we'll scale this one down to 24 so we have two sizes. I'm going to hold Alt and just drag these around randomly on the screen for kind of a particle effect. Just to add a little bit of detail to this white area and add some shapes. 
And with that, we are done. So that's it for this video. Make sure you don't miss the second part of this video. It'll probably come out next week. I look forward to coding this with you guys in part two. So make sure you're subscribed and have the notifications on so you don't miss that. Also, really quickly, I just want to say thank you guys for 20,000 subscribers. I'm pretty sure we're going to hit it by the time this video goes out. If not, thank you guys anyway in advance. So I just want to say thank you guys here, and I'll probably mention it in the beginning of my next video. Uh, that is an extremely large number of people, and when I started this YouTube channel, I had no idea it would grow this large. And at the rate it's growing, I just cannot believe where it's going to be soon. So thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate all of you. Thank you for subscribing and liking and commenting, uh, but I just want to say thank you guys so much. And um, as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.